All right, I'll get started. Um, thanks for having me today. As uh, I keep saying, Jen, but it's Mrs. Mulligan would, uh, told you guys, I'm from Pembroke. Um, I go to my slide, coordinating producer for Bruins. But um, I went to the school and haven't been back here since probably '89 or '90, and grew up right down the street here. Used to play football, street hockey, basketball, anything you name in the back back here. So there used to be a ramp in the middle of the school that I'm blown away is not no longer there. I don't know where they would lose the ramp or replace the ramp. For the stairs, I know, but I, that used to be a huge ramp, which just blows me away that it's not there anymore. Um, so I'm really excited, um, honored to be here because I'm uh, very proud of being from Pembroke and what I do now and uh, producing Boston Bruins hockey. So um, graduated from Silver Lake in 1994. You can see I started at Nesson in 95, so pretty uh, quick turnaround while I was in college. Got an overnight editing job uh, at Nesson. And, now going into my 17th season producing Boston Bruins hockey. Um, I live in Raynham with my two girls, uh, one 14 and nine. So uh, one's in eighth grade at BR and fourth grade at uh, Raynham Elementary School. So um, when I started back in 95, overnight editing, I used to work in Pembroke Community Access Television where I did lighting, editing, camera work, anything. I hosted a couple TV shows. I did play-by-play -play for local high school sports. Um, and then when a job opened up at Nesson, they were hiring, they were growing, hiring, hiring four to six editors. I was one of the people that they hired for six months, and it's turned into almost 28 years next month. So um, pretty wild journey through, those, through that time. I like to say I'm living the dream, producing Boston Bruins hockey on Nesson, but I've done a number of different projects through the years at Nesson, just do the studio shows, but uh, produce Red Sox games, Paw Sox, who are now the Woo Sox out in Worcester. Uh, sea Dogs up in Portland, Little League Baseball down in Bristol, Connecticut. Uh, we used to do the week leading up to the ESPN Championships. Um, no problem. No problem. All good. Um, horse jumping, the tradition in the Boston Cup. Uh, the tradition is the Sports Museum Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, I'm teaching the class. <laughs> uh, the horse jumping thing always was interesting to me that uh, one of the Bruins owners was big into the horse jumping, and uh, I'm like, well, where do I go to do that? And it was Halifax, Mass, on 106. It's like, okay, I live, I grew up right down the street, so it was pretty wild that I was producing horse jumping with our big Nesson trucks uh, in Halifax. Uh, Three-time Emmy Award winner in New England sports um, on shows that I've been involved in, with uh, Bergeron at 1000, Char at 1000, and I think with Brad Marsh and my story was the other one that we did. Um, very honored to be part of that and get the trophies and being able to display them. And this past month was part of the Bruins All Centennial Selection Committee, which again was made up of 30 people from around the area. And I thought it was pretty, pretty special and honored to be part of that selection committee that came up with the All Centennial team for the Boston Bruins. It's on YouTube if you want to watch that as well. So you can check out that whole hour long show and hear who I nominated and voted for. Um, some of the highlights of my career here you know, at Nesson and through my life, um, when I got promoted in 2007, um, I was producing pre and post game shows for Red Sox and Bruins, and I got called into my boss's office, um, never forget it, the Friday before Memorial Day weekend in May, uh, asking me, how'd you like to produce Boston Bruins hockey? And I still get goosebumps thinking about it, but George Chill's just saying, I was so excited, but I didn't really think too much through it. I, yes, 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 I'll do it. Immediately called my parents, who were actually in Nashville at the time, uh, and called them and told them I'd been promoted to produce Boston Bruins hockey. Then I had to call my wife and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna be traveling a lot more. Uh, and just the way the, the whole job took me uh, around the country and doing different things. So um, that was probably the, one of the highlights of my career was getting promoted to produce Boston Bruins hockey and something that I dreamed about doing and uh, achieving that. Um, Bruins won a Stanley Cup in 11. I was part of that in, in, the, in Vancouver. Um, got a chance to experience everything that was involved in that, the travel. Um, just being part of the cup celebration, the parade, World Series championships in 04, 07, 13, and 18 with the Red Sox. Been all been an amazing run of Boston sports with Nesson and the Bruins and Red Sox. Uh, in 04, we finished probably around 2 a.m. doing the post-game shows and being at Fen Nesson used to be at Fenway Park. I left, went home, probably got home around three. I live about an hour away from Boston and at Raynham. And uh, I got a call at 6 a.m. saying, hey, the Red Sox are landing, the trophy's gonna be here in an hour and a half. 
I got right back in the car and I had the trophy in my hand after they won the World Series in 04 and ended the curse around 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. And that was just a wild moment. You still could smell the beer on it and, and the, the smudge marks and just the celebration of it. So something I'll never, ever forget. Uh, and now I get a chance to work with some of my childhood idols, guys that I grew up idolizing, Jim Rice, Cam Neely. Uh, Jim is an analyst that, you know, my nickname is Z. So I just get a kick out of him calling me Z or seeing Cam Neely with the Boston Bruins, who's the president of the organization, calling me Z or asking me questions or being on the road and having a chance to sit down and whether it's just having a quick conversation about what we do at Nesson. He worked at Nesson as an analyst before he, became, you know, with, back with the Bruins organization. So I had that relationship with him. Um, and just building that relationship back then has helped me now in his role that he trusts me and knows he can come to me with any questions about what we do on television. So it's pretty wild of how that's kind of come full circle that he was probably my favorite athlete growing up and now I'm, he calls me Z and I get to work for him. I uh, just want to put a couple of things that I had to overcome uh, to get to you know Pembroke Middle School here today. Uh, but the job back in 07 and even before that, uh, when I started traveling with the Red Sox in 04, the fear of flying, like I was so scared to fly. And I only flew once in my life was my honeymoon before really starting to travel. So it was very, it was real. Like I was petrified to be on a plane, uh, but got over it pretty quickly. And that was part of the job and just said, okay, I gotta, I gotta get over this. And now it's, I don't even think of it. And I think it's wild that my kids get on a plane and it's like, it's not a big deal, but that was a big real fear that I had. It was a fear of flying. So, uh, and now the, just the new world after COVID, how we produce games. Um, Two, three years ago, I'd be on a plane right now going to San Jose, and I'd be gone till Wednesday. Now I'm not. Now I got to try to stay awake until 10:30 at night on Thursday to produce the game from San Jose, from Watertown, Mass. Uh, and it's wild how you know what the television industry has done after COVID, how we can produce games not being on site. We still send a director, a camera guy, and all our talent, but graphics and producer are back at Watertown producing the game. So it is pretty wild how it's changed since COVID. There's the 2011 uh, cup. I just wanted to share that little memory that that was one of my highlights. Um, and for, the, for everyone in the room that wants to get a chance to see it, I did bring a show and tell. Um, so I did get a, a little prize after 2011 of having a Stanley Cup ring that you can pass around. Um, but that was pretty cool for the Bruins gave I think 11 of us, the executive style ring that, uh, that they won in 11 and made sure we, uh, we had to sign a waiver that would never sell it, which is pretty wild. Um, but that's the Stanley Cup ring. The player ring was a little bit bigger, of course, but I uh, take great pride having a Stanley Cup ring. So I thought I'd bring it and share it with you. And Milan Lucic passed me that cup about 40 minutes after the game. So I'll never forget that moment. Um, before I get into my day-to-day -day and my role, any questions so far or keep this interactive or go ahead. Sorry, you keep referring to your ta like the talent. Sure, what sorry. Does that mean? Yeah, good question. I probably, talent would be for me, Jack Edwards, Andy Brickley, you know, the play-by-play -play, uh, for Red Sox for years was Don Osillo and Jerry Remy, uh, Dave O'Brien, Tim Wakefield, uh, you know, guys that I've worked with. Our sideline reporters, they just saw Nauco in the pitcher. Like that's the talent to me is the on-air ca on, on okay. camera folks. Um, the people that are calling the game and even though the behind the scenes people are the real talent. So I hope that, I hope that makes the, uh, the, the edit, but, um, that's when I, yeah, sorry, good question because that's what I'm saying. Talent. That's what I'm referring to is Jack, Brick, Nauco, Sophia, Adam, uh, all the people that I've worked with through the years. So that's talent. Go ahead. Have you ever messed up really bad before when producing something? Yes. Great question. And we lose sleep over it. And uh, there's been moments, like I've had different moments of, you know, uh, and we, we, talk, we call them teachable moments or things like that. But, you know, we've had graphics hit the air spelled incorrectly that, you know, the last line of defense that uh, a legend of the Bruins and his name spelled wrong. And it's on Twitter for everyone to see. Or um, Some things are out of your control, but that's the stuff that, you know, no matter how well you do at night uh, in a game and all the replay sequences, uh, mistakes do happen, unfortunately. And sometimes I'll get a text from my brother, what happened on that replay? Well, thanks, Steve. You know, I don't text you when you mess up, but um, you, people can see it. But it does put a little pressure on you. I like having a clean show for that reason. So good question. No, come on in. No problem. Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. 
So far. Yeah. That answer your question? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, unfortunately we have. Unfortunately we have made mistakes. Yeah. My show and tell. Okay. Bye. All right. We're gonna pass it. Yeah, that's fine. Bye, Cole. Thank you. Thank you. I like the shirt. Um, so yeah, that's, we do make mistakes. Any other questions? I'll move on. Are you sure you're going to ask me a question? No, I don't know. I can ask you a question. What position do you play in football? Oh, how do you know I play football? You said it earlier. I listen. What? Your shirt, Eli. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, wait. I play right guard and D-tackle and running back occasionally. What number? 78. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Part of, big part of producing is listening. And, you know, talent, Jack and Brick, might reference something, and I have to pick up on what they say for a replay or a, a stat. They might, you know, Brick might point out the pass from behind the net. So I am always have to be listening to that kind of stuff. So that's, I heard you say you played football earlier. So listening is very important. Um, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day production of the Bruins, the look, the feel, what happens on whistles, commercial breaks. Um, I put traffic up in there because there are probably 10 or 12 people in my headset at once whether it's tape folks, audio, talent, um, master control back at Nesson, just giving commands or um, talking and selling different things. So uh, it does get a little hectic at times, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's one big video game. 24-7 uh, during the season, I'm always talking, thinking about Bruins and TV and how we can improve the broadcast. Um, had a call this morning about a graphic we did on Saturday that the graphics producer and I didn't like, and we talked about it afterwards. I'm like, well, let's give it some thought. I ended up was watching Sunday Night Football. I texted him about it. I said, hey, do you see what they just did? Maybe we can steal it. And we had that conversation this morning because we want to fix something that we didn't like in our first game for, for Thursday, and uh, we're going to fix it. So that's just, we're always working. Even though I'm kind of off today, I still had a half-hour call about what we're doing, and I'll probably end up working on the game tonight. The Sharks play at 10.30 against Carolina, and my goal is to stay up as long as I can and try to watch as much of the game because I'm preparing for the Bruins Sharks game on Thursday. And that's where my head and my mental state is. Um, I manage the team relations with the team, the, the interviews, the message, all the marketing, like they have promos we want to get in. They're raffling off a big Bobby Orr golf cart right now. I'm making sure we get that message on the broadcast. Any interview you see on Nesson, most part, are, I had some hand on that, coordinating the talent the location, the request to the team, that all goes through me uh, throughout the season. So it's uh, a lot of juggling with their PR staff and it's building those relationships and the trust that I can you know, call them at any time and say, hey, we need this, we're looking for this, what can you help us with? Um, and then just inside our own building and our own company, managing the commercial format, what we're doing out of breaks, all our sales stuff, everything I talk about during a game prep leading wise turns into this one sheet for me for in game and uh, all our sales stuff is here. And then I just have some historical stuff that I always make sure I'm part of and ready to go in the game. But it all is part of the prep leading into a, a game day. And that's part of, I probably skipped ahead a little bit, but the prep of watching the opponent, preparing the sales, talking to our talent, getting our open ready. Our open is what I call from seven o'clock to 7.04. What we do in those four minutes to set up the game and get people a reason to watch. Um, and that's the, the overall prep and lead up to a game day as a producer. Seven o'clock game starts early in the morning. It's not just right at seven. And it's not just me, it's, it's sales, it's director preparing the paperwork, it's the talent doing the research, the graphics doing stats. Um, oh, at 10 o'clock, I'm basically confirming that all this information I need, I have, and I'm ready to go. Uh, 11 o'clock, the Bruins practice, call it a morning skate. We'll get to know who's playing goalie, what the lines is. Is Matty, Matt Patois going to center Brad Marchand tomorrow night? Like all that information we gather in the morning and we kind of help it so we can then at noontime confirm our open, confirm what we're talking about, what we're looking for. The crew starts in the truck around noon and we have about 30 people inside the truck that put together the game. Uh, video, engineers, camera guys, tape guy. We have tape, five tape operators. I say guys, we also, we, we probably have 
we have a female director, one of two NH, uh, female directors in the NHL. Um, we have probably three female tape operators, um, female graphics, female bug operator, and a female technical director, which is the person that's in front of the, um, the, the big board with all the, you know, pushing all the buttons of the game that the director says, wipe to A, wipe to red, cut one. That's also a female. So it's just, it's a great uh, representation of everybody pulling together and doing the, doing the job. Our, the person that does Red Sox full-time is also female as well, Amy Johnson. So um, it's not just a male-dominated sport anymore, which is, or industry, I should say. It's great. Um, and as the day goes on, we're just confirming, getting ready, and hoping that at 7 o'clock, everything you've done to prepare for the game is ready to go, and there's no surprises. I always, when I'm helping develop people, anybody that's learning the job, I want to have everything done by noontime on a game day. So when we find out someone's been traded or s someone got hurt in the morning or something's going on, we're prepared and we can then react. So um, you can't, nothing beats preparation. Uh, I put a photo in here. I should have made it a little bigger, but this is my look of a game. Uh, I took a picture Saturday knowing I was doing this. Um, but, and again, here's my format that I keep with me. My roster here, uh, a big Patriots fan, so my mouse pad is for the Patriots. Um, but my main, I'm looking here the whole time for replay machines and how, what we're doing, overheads, different NHL feeds. I can see our talent up there um, in the booth. And like I said, there's probably 10 or 12 people in my headset communicating what's going on. I control this monitor here, the ISO monitor, goes up to the booth that if something happens during a game that maybe a player, you know, we've had some key injuries through the years when Patrice Bergeron got hurt in 07. That was my fifth ever game doing hockey. And I still remember some of those moments and what was, what we show, what we don't show, what's respectful. Um, you know, CBS had an NFL player break a leg recently and they didn't show the replay. So all that stuff kind of goes into it. If, you know, the NHL actually has meetings every year that you go over those situations, you're prepared for them. So you, you're ready for injuries and we had a play a couple of years ago where two players collided, and it wasn't really one player's fault or the other, but Andy Brickler, analyst, like, hey, can I see that? Can I see that? While we're showing, you know, the player's down, the trainer's coming out, I can show him behind the scenes, not on TV, by punching a button, show him the hit. He can then make a, you know, a point he wants to make for his analysis of the game. So while the director's cutting all the live action, I can show some stuff behind the scenes so we're getting ready uh, for when ready for the replays and things like that. That also is the case for, you know, tipped in goals or anything like that. Um, it's all part of there, so. That's what I'm staring at every game. And it's a little different on for road games. We don't have as many resources and bells and whistles, but that's the overall feel of it. Um, I did have a video, but I'll explain this video because um, I thought it was, a, it was a good example of what I do and how prepared and what gets us fired up. Um, this is early in the game, minute, 15, minute 19 in. Uh, Linus Almark, Connor Clifton falls on him out of play as the puck goes into the zone. And the game before, he left the game injured, his last start, where Connor Clifton fell on him. And so my first replay here was, okay, what just happened now? And then while the replay is on the air, I'm queuing up on the talent, Almark, Almark's injury. And we go right to it. And that's the stuff when we're producing a game or anything, that's the stuff that gets all excited in us. We high five over moments like that because we were prepared for it. Um, it wasn't like, oh, that happened last game. I wish we had that. We had it. We were ready to go a minute 19 in. And um, the LA Kings once in 2017 scored with 0.8 seconds left to beat Rask and to beat the Bruins. I have it on the top of every format. So anytime there's a late face off in a period or a game, Jack Edwards always references it, and I have it ready to go. And it's just that kind of stuff that just gets you prepared and gets you going. And I love when we're able to show off what, that we're ready. Um, my last one is just, like I mentioned before, I did some Red Sox before. I do about 18 games a year now. Um, and just some differences between the two of getting a lot of information for hockey in the morning and baseball's a little later. You wait for batting practice around 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Just makes a little hectic afternoon than what it should be. Um, we get a little more breaks in hockey with the two intermissions. And now the pitch clock has helped, but uh, hockey's just such a fast sport. 
there is just less time to do things. You're waiting on whistles. Where baseball, you know you're going to get 20, 27 outs aside. Um, and when we traveled for hockey, it was in one city, out the next. Baseball is nice to be in a city for three days and get a chance to walk around and see the country a little bit. So those are the big differences, I would say, between the two sports. Um, but I just want to, you know, before I wrap up and ask more questions or answer more questions, you know, thanks for having me. Like I said, from Pembroke, I started at Pembroke Community Access Television. Um, you just never know who you're going to meet, where you're going to meet them. Uh, people that will get you chances to get, you know, a career or a job or just give something a shot. And uh, one of my best friends is a camera guy. He started the same way in Canton at Canton Public Access Television. He's now a camera guy for Bruins, Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics. Um, so you just never know. And just uh, thanks for them having me in the class today. <laughs> you're going to answer, ask a question. All right. Now I'm ready for questions and answers. Now, I have a couple of things that aren't here. One was what made you want to start TV production and did someone inspire you? Oh, that's just inspire me. That's interesting. Um, no, I mean, I was my high school baseball coach worked at Nesson back in the day. Um, and when he had the opening, I'm saying, hey, why don't you give this a shot? It's a six month program to see how you do in editing. I said, why not? I'll give it a shot. And uh, so that's how I basically got my foot in Anesson and got going, and it's turned in almost 27 years. So. Explain to them how you, like what you did in high school. You did editing for like the high school sure. sports teams. Yeah, and then uh, another gentleman named Roger Snow, who was a local writer at the time, um, he used to do Pembroke uh, Community Access Television, and we started broadcasting games. We did one camera, uh, girls, hockey, girls soccer, boys soccer, Hockey, uh, I played baseball. Uh, I don't think we did any basketball back then. Uh, we did some field hockey. Um, and we, I would do the commentating of the games and edit some of the shows we did. We had a show called From the Bench, uh, which was on a couple different uh, local areas. But uh, I edited. We used to do our lighting in the studio, camera in the studio. I got all that experience in high school uh, that started my freshman year. So you guys aren't that far away from it. But it just, and then when I got to Nesson, and that's how you know Bob knew that I could edit. I knew the basics of editing, and I knew how to edit. Uh, I had to, you know, be taught different things, of course, but I had a good background and ready to go, and off and running. Go ahead. Um, did you go to college? I went to Bridgewater for a few years. Yes. Yep. And I studied political science, and then when I took off at Nesson, I uh, became full time at Nesson and went went the rest of the way. Go ahead. Have you always wanted? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, I think once I realized, especially at the end, towards the end of high school, and I was going into college, that sports was probably going to be, you know, very interested in it. Uh, Nesson was, you know, working for Bruins and Red Sox. Being from here, there's nothing better. I take a great deal of pride in, you know, working for a local team and, you know, loving the Bruins and Red Sox growing up. Um, that was a place to be. Go ahead, Neil. What's Neil? Your, yeah. What's your favorite part? My favorite part, um, it's, it sounds weird, but I love that, you know, again, I always keep going back to Pembroke, but, you know, I love when I come back or I play golf with a bunch of guys that they know what I do and they know that, you know, my, my brothers or whatever, you know, they, they know what I do and they get to see what I do every day and whether I get a phone call from my father or they just see what they did last night. It's like, I did that. I was part of that broadcast. Uh, so I take a great deal of pride in that and I love that part of my, my job and, uh, Knowing that it's, you know, people like, oh, Z does that. That's kind of cool. And he's produced the Bruins. So that's one of my favorite parts. But um, I love taking those moments, like the 2013 when the Bruins beat Toronto. Like being in the truck for that. Uh, even though it was negative last year, being in the truck for Patrice Bergeron hugging Brad Marchand and making sure we captured that moment was such an important part of our job. Was Even though we're cutting around and we're showing different things, our communication in the truck that night was, we can't miss this moment. And that's the stuff that we try to bring to the viewers at home. So that is part of the fun part. Go ahead. That's okay. Go ahead. Is it like a hard job? Um, I, I, I consider it stressful. Like, there is, you know, like, it does when I'm coming home after a game and your, your adrenaline's flying for two and a half hours. You know, hockey moves. Baseball you know, now it moves a little more than it did, but you're, you know, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that I don't get that phone call or text from a family member or a friend. What'd you do? What happened? Um, you know, the speed of the sport 
is stressful. And just knowing that, hey, you know, there's people that you're relying on with sales or other things that you're doing to make sure we're all one team and one, one network doing it together. There is a different level of stress to make sure we're delivering the product and we're doing, you know, good things on television. So yes, it's stressful and hard. I have another one from one of the students. Go ahead. Here is, um, what types of skills do you need? Um, I mean, I, I think organization is number one of the biggest things that I find is that I, I find myself very organized. Uh, I don't, I didn't show this prop, but um, I travel like used to be. I travel with something around like the big file cabinet, but um, I'll travel around with a case like this right now, and this is basically my 17 years of Boston Bruins hockey on two little hard drives. So when we start looking up historical moments of Bergeron's goal or a Chara shootout win where he did a slap shot from five feet away from the goalie or a Pasta's first hat trick, it's all on these little hard drives. They're my lifeline that if I have. And so organization and just being prepared for those moments is definitely one. Um, I, you know, I've never been a big... Uh, I just I've never been a big bit like uh, I'm trying to think what the next what the term is, but um, you know knowing the softwares we use like I use a ton of Excel, I use a ton of you know Microsoft Teams things like that that have now become part of our lives. We communicate so much on that stuff, so that is also a skill that we've you know developed through the years. All the Google Drive um, when we're doing a game in San Jose on Thursday, all those hard drives most of them are in San Jose but then we can still get highlights from Nesson using Google Drive and those different technologies that we have. It's pretty wild to think of what we can do now that we couldn't do before, so. Um, the other skill that I think, I don't know when you develop it or how you develop it, or maybe it was when I worked at Bobby Hackett's. I always, I was a, I worked at a restaurant in Pembroke for years. My brothers worked there. Um, it was decision, it was fast decision making, thinking on your feet and just being, you know, confident enough to make that decision, so. I'd say that's another skill is just decision making. There was a high stressful, you work Thanksgiving in a restaurant, you were flying. And uh, I compare that a lot to live television. I really do. And people sometimes laugh at me. But if you worked in a kitchen, you know what I'm talking about, that it's fast, it's making a decision. So making decisions, you know, and sticking with them, that's probably the hardest part is sometimes I'm going one way on the production and something might happen and it's, you know, I, we, we're, we're sticking with this decision and we're going. So that's, you know, you can always go back to certain things. So decision making. Hope that answered. I think I gave you a couple examples. Anything else here? More hockey questions? No. <laughs> is it hard to concentrate on your work even when there is so many people around you? Uh, yes. And it's uh, like... I always find it hard. I, I use it as, as an excuse sometimes, but in, in TV, like some of the stuff, we, we call them resets. At 8 o'clock, if you're flicking around the channel, you might see a broadcast show a goal that happened a half hour ago. We call those resets because we know people are flicking around. When we're up against a Patriots game and the Patriots play at the same time, and I'm trying to watch them as well because I'm a huge Patriots fan, um, I call them resets where, okay, Pasta scored two goals in the first period, but the Patriots had the ball, and we know that our rating might not have been that great. Um, so that's part where we have to concentrate and be ready for. I have mass control always in my ear saying, Patriots just went to commercial. And it's okay, we, next whistle, let's show Pasta's two goals. And you, you just, you're just kind of always ready for those moments, but I'm keeping one eye on the Patriots. I have people helping me. I have 10 or 12 people in my head, but we're producing Boston Bruins hockey, and that's our number one focus. But then, next time you notice that, <coughs> Why they just show me Pasta's two goals is because you just turned over from the Patriots game, and now we updated you on what just happened to the Bruins. That's why we do things. Go ahead. When is the time you've ever felt like very discouraged or just like kind of down after like a day or something? Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, well, first of all, I like to think like nothing bothers me too much, but things do bother me. Do bother me, you know with like I said, if we spell something wrong and it hits the ear, or I mess up a replay sequence that I'm like, man, I wish I showed what Brick was talking about, or I messed it up, or we didn't cue at the right spot, or, or we just, somewhat, you know, we weren't, went to the wrong machine, it was rewinding. You see that sometimes on the broadcast. It happens, we're all humans. Um, 
So that sometimes, you know, gets me down. I, I used to have a boss I didn't get along with that great. No longer works in Nesson. But he just, he was very, he didn't quite understand the, and I guess maybe it was even when I had younger kids, but we're traveling, we're trying to do this. And next thing you know, it's like, well, I need you to go to Detroit to do something real quick for the Red Sox. It's like, well, no, but I have two days off and my job's the Bruins, but no, you, you know, you, next thing you know, I'm on a plane to go do a Red Sox day game just to help. And I, I got the larger message of it, but I didn't like his message. <laughs> so there were some, there's some certain times where you do get a little discouraged of, but as your job is the worst things in the world, you're doing, you're producing Bruins or Red Sox baseball, or Red Sox hockey, Bruins hockey or Red Sox baseball. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, but there are moments where you're like, oh, I can't believe that just happened. And you're driving home and you just want to, you know, just forget about it, but you can't. You lose sleep over it, and it happens. Go ahead. One day, do you, like, like, for some days, will you, like, work, like, two days straight with, like, no break, and then the next two days you'll have them, like, all? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, sometimes baseball is a lot more, you know, if you do baseball, you're producing 120 games a season probably, you know, and that becomes a 10-game road trip to a six-game homestand. That's, that's a grind. Uh, hockey is a little different where... We played Saturday and we don't have a game till Thursday, but then they play Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, this weekend will be a challenge. We're 10.30 on Saturday and 8 o'clock on Sunday. I'll probably get about a few hours of sleep and right back at Nesson. Um, so there is some of those moments, but uh, most of the time I get some good time off in the summer to play some golf and enjoy some family time. But uh, like I said, I always do look at it too that there's worse things. You know, I'm, I'm producing television. I'm not working in a, you know, not solving, you know, world problems here. I'm just producing a hockey game. So I do sometimes take that approach. Go ahead, Charlie. Have you played or do you like hockey or baseball yourself? I love baseball. Uh, I love hockey, I mean, obviously, but I played baseball growing up. I never played hockey. Um, my nephews are big hockey fans now, and they're skating, and we were playing street hockey set Sunday, actually. And I said to my three-year-old nephew, I can't even skate, but I have a Stanley Cup ring. So that kind of drives some of my friends nuts. Uh, but I, I've always grew up, my father was a huge hockey fan. Um, that's what made the, the moment of me telling him I just got you know, promoted to Boston Bruins hockey such a proud moment. Um, so Bruins are always on television growing up. Uh, but I love baseball. You know, I, Roger Clemens is my favorite. Roger Clemens, Jim Rice, some of my favorite Red Sox. And those guys growing up were just awesome to watch. Have you ever been to Iowa? Iowa? Yeah. Why would you ask me about Iowa? Really? That's awesome, Eli. Uh, Eli, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think I have. No. no sorry. Well, for, like the Field of Dreams, like one. Oh, that would be all right. Ne I never have. Never have. How much time you've been to? A lot. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I've yeah. never really counted, but like even Canada. Um, so you know, there's just all the different cities in the NHL. I, I think I've been a. Uh, only a couple different baseball stadiums I haven't been to because I fill in, in, you know, when I used to travel doing that and been to every hockey arena. So it's, Wait. you know, all those cities. So. Do you, like, now after COVID, do you travel, like, at all? Or? We go to a couple cities. So during COVID, our production companies, the truck that we work in every day, I should have brought a picture of the truck. It's a big trailer, you know, and it's got all the, that equipment in it. Um, they got together and decided we got to figure out a way to produce these games with less people you know, to spread them out the truck a little more. Because like I said, there's still 25, 30 people in a truck. It's tight. Um, and so we ca they came up with some great systems that we can produce games in Watertown with minimal people on site. And so um, I st Canada doesn't quite have it that well yet. The U.S. cities did it. So I'm still going to go to Montreal. I'll go to Calgary. I'll go to Edmonton. I'll go to Vancouver. I go to Seattle, even though it's, you know, obviously in the U.S., but that trip is such a long trip. It doesn't make sense for us to do one game in so we do that whole trip. Um, it comes out to be a trip a month. So, go one more. I, I, I'm gonna skip back here. Morgan, right? No. no yes. Did you want a producing career growing up? Um, I always, I did want to be in sports or politics. That's kind of where I was. I thought I would always, I thought I'd be on camera or some kind of play-by-play -play guy or whatever. And but I fell in love with being in the truck. Um, I don't know if I said this in this this session or the session before. And my first experience of being in the truck. Did I talk about that yet? Um, so that, that was pretty wild of just getting into the, a college hockey game with a Red Sox producer in January asked me, you, you ever been in the truck? I said, no, I've never been. I'd love to see a live game and how it's done. And uh, I came down. It was in Providence. I was 20 minutes from my house. 
we, he did the first period and first intermission hit, and he goes, "What'd you think?" I'm like, "It was awesome. It was, you know, it's great, great game." He goes, "All right." Took his headsets off. Said, "You get the rest of the game." And I was, "Oh my god!" And it took me a while. I was still like shaking after the game of just the adrenaline of it. And he actually did that to me at a college basketball game once too. He goes, "You have a direct?" I said, "No." He goes, "Well, here you go." And I did a second half of a college basketball game, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Um, but those moments of just throwing me in this in the fire were great. Um, but yeah, that's. I've always been part of sports, and I think just as it's gone on in my career, and just I started as an editor, started you know doing some camera, did graphics, um, did it all back in the day at Nesson, where it was a smaller company, and I just kept saying, well, what's that person do? All right, and then I'd follow them around and shadow them. What's that person do? The producer's telling the director's telling the technical director. I was a director for a little while. Well, the producer's telling the director. I want to. I'm going to get into producing, and and the old Red Sox producer back in the day, I. I'm thankful that he saw something in me to help me get along, you know, show me the ropes and part of the promotion in 07. So what is the difference between directing, like producing, directing, editing? Sure. What's the difference between all those? Well, number one, to me, producing is control. I love the control of the broadcast that, you know, it's not going to happen unless I, you know, help say it or push it along. Director to me is you're, you're focused on what's happening live in that moment. You're cutting camera one. Camera three in the corner, camera five up top, or tight to a, you know, on a whistle, let's get the head coach, let's get Jim Montgomery on camera two. You're, dire- you're flying, add that graphic, add the bug, wipe to the replay of sources. I'm next to the director telling what we're doing on whistles, what's next, this graphic's in, we can't do a replay, uh, that kind of stuff. So we're, like I said earlier, more of the traffic cop where they are so focused on what's happening live at that moment. It, no, yeah, you're just you're in a different room, and well, this we have replay machines that we call editors. Um, but when I first started as editing, was just editing, you know, highlights of we call them B-roll strips. Like if you hear you're watching a show tonight, they're talking about Brad Marchand playing with a young 19-year-old center, and they show video of Matt Patra. It's, they'll show a 30-second clip. That's stuff that I would edit back then, just the 30 seconds of that player that would air in the pre and post game show or a new show. Um, or music highlights or things like that, high-end bumps, that kind of stuff. So that's the difference, I guess. Go ahead. Is there a favorite place you've worked, like traveling around? Uh, that's a good question. It's not, I've never been to Iowa, so I apologize. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, self, I mean, I do love, this is going to sound, well, I love Rocky. So being in Philadelphia and running the Rocky Steps, which is an awesome experience that I'll never, you know, every time I go there, I make sure I show a Rocky. And that's part of, I think, the fun part of the control part of the broadcast is we go to Philly, I make sure we show the Rocky statue every time because it's just such a big part of my life. I love Rocky. Um, Nashville for the, you know, the music. You, you get to a city the day before. Sometimes you have some days off where you can actually walk around and see them. Um, in 11 in Vancouver, they had a three day, we had three days off out in Vancouver and got a chance to see, I mean, it's a beautiful city on the water. Um, so there are some great places to be. Lucky. Anything else? You're packing up, Charlie? Are we all done? Sure. All right. <laughs> oh, well, how about a thank you? Thank you. Thank no. You. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. Favorite arena? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Favorite arena? Uh, Toronto is awesome. The, the history of the hockey. Montreal is pretty good. Um, baseball, it's Camden Yards in Baltimore or in uh, Seattle. The, the, the dome in Seattle is great. Um, so those, those are probably two, two of my favorite in baseball, two of my favorite in hockey. The can- just the, the whole part of Toronto, it's a beautiful city. It's a clean building. It's just a great atmosphere to be in. So I'd say Toronto. That's final it. Can you clap again then? <laughs> right. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you.